Without a plan, revision might be stressful and lead to poor exam results. In this podcast, I guide students through one part of such a plan, study resources. First, we cover the theory for each topic, and then I suggest questions to practice acquired skills. Join me in making your exam experience a success story. A quick disclaimer. OpenAI's large-scale language generation tool ChatGPT may have been used to draft some content in this episode. StudySquare LTD has adapted the content and takes full responsibility for the publication. So let's learn more about covalent bonding. Covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons between two nuclei, usually formed between non-metal atoms. Many compounds with covalent bonds exist as molecules that have weak intermolecular forces. The weak interactions result in molecular compounds having low melting and boiling points, as during the changes of state, weak intermolecular forces are broken instead of strong covalent bonds. Most molecular compounds, even in a solid state, do not conduct electricity, since they do not have charged particles that are free to move and transfer the charge. The molecular formulae for molecular compounds can be found by counting the number of atoms of specific type in a molecule. For example, a molecule with 4 carbon atoms and 10 hydrogen atoms has a molecular formula C4H10. To find out the formula of a covalent compound made from two elements, their valencies can be cross-combined and simplified to get an empirical formula. Commonly, hydrogen has a valency of 1, carbon of 4, nitrogen of 3, oxygen of 2, halogens of 1. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine naturally exist as diatomic molecules. Thus, in reaction equations, unless required otherwise, oxygen is represented by O2 and iodine solid by I2. Elements can form molecules of more than two atoms, for example, C60, fullerene, O3, ozone, P4, or S8. Most covalent bonds are single, meaning that they consist of two electrons. However, they are double bonds with four bonding electrons, like an O2, or triple bonds with six bonding electrons, like an N2. So let's see an example of a problem for this theory. Explain why nitrogen has a relatively low melting point. If you want to see the answer and the solution for this question, use the link in the show notes of this episode. Do you know anyone who could benefit from listening to this episode? Share it with them. That's how we can support more students in preparing for their exams. Also, if you like listening to this podcast, it would be awesome if you left a five-star rating or a review. The next topic we're going to revise is ionic bonding. Ionic bonding is an electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions. A solid ionic compound forms ionic lattice that has relatively strong forces between ions. It is therefore difficult to separate ions apart or allow them to move, resulting in ionic compounds having relatively high melting and boiling points. When an ionic compound is dissolved in water or molten, it becomes an electrolyte. Electrolytes can conduct electricity since they have ions that are free to move through the liquid to transfer the charge. Ionic bonding is commonly formed between metals and nonmetals by metal ions losing electrons and transferring them to nonmetal atoms. Thus, metals tend to form positive ions and nonmetals negative ions. In this way, frequently achieving the electronic structure of noble gases. Most common charge of ions formed by group 1 elements is plus, or plus 1, group 2, 2 plus, group 6, 2 minus, and group 7, minus or 1 minus. Negative ions, made of a single atom each, usually have an ending ite, for example sulfite or nitrite. Group ions are charged particles consisting of more than one atom. For example, SO4 2 minus, which is sulfate, SO3 2 minus, which is sulfite, CO3 2 minus, carbonate, PO4 3 minus, phosphate, NO3 minus, nitrate, OH minus, hydroxide, or NH4 plus, ammonium. 
many of the negative group ions have an ending eight or eight. Since ionic lattices have high numbers of ions, only an empirical formulae for them can be deduced, which provides a ratio of atoms or ions in the compound. To find the empirical formula of an ionic compound, the ionic charges without a plus or a minus can be cross-combined and simplified. If multiples of a group ion are used, brackets are introduced around the group ion. The question that relates to this theory is, define ionic bonding. There is a link in the show notes of this episode in case you want to double check the answer for this question. Many students revise for exams without a plan. This might result in sporadic learning, poor exam results and worse career opportunities. However, you can avoid that. Generate your personal exam revision plan on studysquare.co.uk forward slash plan. The next topic we are going to revise is metallic bonding. Metallic bonding is the electrostatic attraction between metal ions and delocalized electrons they share. Delocalized electrons are outer shell electrons that are not associated to a particular atom or ion, but instead are free to move through a structure they are in. Due to metals having delocalized electrons that can transfer charge, they are good electric and thermal conductors. Metals form giant metallic structures with repetitive and tightly packed lattices, which results in them being malleable and dense. To increase the hardness of metals by distorting the regular lattice, they are mixed together with other elements to form alloys. Metallic bonds are relatively strong. It is therefore difficult to separate particles apart or allow them to move, resulting in metals having relatively high melting and boiling points. The question that relates to this theory is, define metallic bonding. If you are unsure about how to solve this problem, you can visit the page of this topic, which is in the show notes. Did you know that we have other podcasts for math and science? If you are interested to learn more, search for Revision with Jonas on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. So let's learn more about covalent structures. A covalent or network structure is a large lattice consisting of atoms connected with covalent bonds. Covalent bonds are the strongest and they are broken when covalent structures melt. Thus, substances with covalent structures have high melting and boiling points. Most giant covalent structures like diamond, silica or silicon do not have charged particles that are free to move to transfer the charge, and thus they do not conduct electricity even when molten. However, there are some exceptions such as graphite, graphene, carbon nanotubes that conduct electricity. Diamond is an allotrope of carbon with each carbon having four covalent bonds with other carbon atoms in the structure. This rigidness of the lattice results in diamond being one of the hardest materials. In contrast, carbon atoms in graphite only have three covalent bonds with other carbon atoms, leaving some delocalized electrons that can travel between the graphite layers, called graphene. This results in graphite and graphene being conductors of electricity. However, graphite layers can slide easily alongside other layers, making graphite relatively fragile. Now let's mention a question that could be asked in this topic. Define a covalent lattice. Now if you want to access the solution and the answer for this question, use the link in the show notes. Now let's go through some theory about dot and cross diagrams. Dot and cross diagrams represent electrons in the outer shells of atoms or ions participating in bonding. Usually dots are used to represent electrons originating from one element and crosses are used for the electrons that come from the other element. In ionic bonding, electrons belong to a specific atom and for negative ions are separated with brackets from other ions. In covalent bonding, dot and cross diagrams due to the electrons being shared, circles that represent outer shells of electrons overlap and atoms share a relevant number of electrons. 
two for a single bond, four for a double, and six for a triple. Since dot and cross diagrams are 2D drawings, for many molecules they cannot present realistic 3D shapes. Okay, so let's have a look at a question for this topic. Andres has drawn a dot and cross diagram for calcium oxide provided in the image. Identify a mistake that they have made. There is a link in the show notes of this episode in case you want to double check the answer for this question. Now that we have covered the theory, it is time to practice solving related problems. So head to steadysquare.co.uk forward slash resources and try answering questions on this topic. I hope you have a great week ahead and until next time.